himself. By the time he learns to reject the bad and choose the good, people will be feeding on curds and honey. Before he knows how to reject bad and choose good, the ground that whose two kings you dread shall be abandoned. What's going to happen? The king of Assyria, right? The Lord will call to come by you. If you such days never had since Ephraim turned for Judah, that king of Assyria, right? They're not going to cause you any problems, but you will have problems from who? From the king um, from Ashur, from Assyria. But I'm giving you a sign that you do not. Do not be afraid of them. That's not your worry. What's the sign? A child will be born. She's pregnant. She'll give birth to a child. She'll name him Emmanuel. That's how you will know that the sign is coming forward. Now, can, from the context, can this possibly be a messianic prophecy? If he's coming to comfort the king, the comfort is... In 500 years, actually more than that, in six or 700 years, no, about five, 600 years, a child will be born. That's the sign that I'm giving you not to worry, because in 500 years, a child's going to be born? It doesn't work. Right? I mean, can it possibly fit into the context? Even if we were to say that Alma means virgin, and it doesn't. Alma throughout scripture means a young woman. But you lie, isn't but you lie? The, the term for a virgin that the Torah uses when it's specific to a virgin is betula, right? It's not saying that she will become pregnant, it's saying, but putting all that aside, let's say Alma means virgin. Could this possibly be a messianic prophecy about a virgin birth that took place 500 years, 600 years hence? Can it possibly mean that from the context? I don't think it can. Right? It's no comfort to me. You know, uh, Senor, you're worried about the IRS. Don't worry. You don't have to worry. And I'll give you a sign. In 500 years, a child will be born, and his name will be Bob. And therefore, don't worry about the IRS. I, 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 it just, it, it, it just, it can't, it just doesn't go. That's, that's no comfort to me. Oh, great, thanks. As long as I'm born in 500 years, whew, I don't have to worry about those those phone calls from the IRS telling me to use a gift card to pay, you know, in order to get those. Yeah. Maybe they're coming back so for the So totally dead. devil's advocate. Yes. But in Haftarot and prophets, aren't we often supposed to be comforted by what's coming in the future? When it's a prophecy about the future, yes. But if okay. you're telling me, don't worry about this, and I'm going to give you a sign not to worry about it. Now we have prophecies that we started with, that the plow, that, that the stores will turn to plowshares. Great, that's very comforting. That the craziness of this world will will reach a point, will end. That is comforting, and there are plenty of prophecies about the future. But this is clearly not a a, a prophecy about a pro, about what will be. 500 years from now. It's telling you what's going to happen very soon, and that way you know you needn't worry about it. About to give birth. That's very yeah. present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, if it's 500 years from now, it's not any comfort yeah. to, uh, to Achaz. Didn't, didn't that apply to then? Yes, that's what it, I'm saying. It, not 500 years from now, but then. What I'm saying is Jesus was born 500 years after this. To well, say that this was a prophecy, a messianic prophecy about the birth of Jesus, makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. I got the, in this right? primary year mixed up. Okay. In its context, in the context of this verse. Right. Now you want to take now, if, you know, you know, when the guy came over to me outside the hotel and he said, "Well, it says in Isaiah, where are we exactly?" 
It says in Isaiah 7, verse 7, that the virgin will give birth. Right? Oh, if you don't know what it says in verse 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and you don't know that Alma doesn't mean virgin, it sounds convincing. You know, it's fascinating. Rabbi Wine told an amazing story. When they dedicated, Rabbi Wine is retired now living in Israel. He's a prolific historian, was a rabbi of a shul and a yeshiva in, in, in Muncie, New York. And when they built a new building, they had stones that were brought from Jerusalem to make up the whole wall um, where the Aron Kodesh, where the Ark was. And there was a, a convent nearby. And they wanted to come and to see the Jewish study room, right, and to see that wall so, so they can come. They said, uh, Rabbi, you know, can we say a prayer here you know, in, in your study hall? So he said, you can say a prayer, but it's got to be a prayer from, from songs. Right? And they said, oh, we have songs. Said, no, no, please, use, use our songs. And they said, uh, I forget which one it was. Right? And afterwards they said to him, but Rabbi, your psalms is not complete. I said, what do you mean? Said, you, left, you left out the verse about long live Jesus the eternal, right? <laughs> right? right? And he said, that, that's not in psalms. No, they've added, they right? changed things. And, 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 and the sister said to him, oh, you know, I never understood how could it be the Jews didn't accept Jesus mm -hmm. when King David in psalms talks about him? Right. Excellent point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, David was about um, 800, 900 years before Jesus. Yeah. So it'd be hard that he was, you know, giving a shout out, you know, at the at the end at the end of whatever chapter that was. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the suffering servant. Okay which is in Isaiah um, 53, okay? However, before we get there, let's see the context that we have. And let's see what terms Isaiah uses to describe who. So in Isaiah 43, 10, 10 it says, Atem a die. You, attempts the plural. You all are my witnesses, says Hashem. Va'avdi, and my servant, Asher Bacharti, that I have chosen. Laman te du v'tan mino li v'tavinu kini Hashem, l'fanai lo notzar el v'achrai lo yiyeh. Right? In order that you may take thought, believe me, understand that I am He, before me no God was formed, after me none shall exist. What do I want from this? What does Avdi mean? My servant. My servant. Who is it referring to? An individual or a group? Atem Eidai Nu'um Hashem, the verse begins. Atem means plural. You all are my witnesses, says God. Va'avdi, and my servant that I have chosen. So we. Yes. Correct. So what do we see? We see the singular avdi is referring to a group. Right? A group could be in the singular. Who is this group that's referred to as avdi? Mm -hmm. You who are my witnesses. This is speaking to the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel, because of our being this one nation, one unique nation, we are, you see, Yeshaya, Isaiah, Yeshaya refers to, him, refers to the nation of Israel in the singular. Avdi, my servant. Atem, you all are my witnesses. Avdi, my servant that I have chosen. Okay, do we see that? Yes. Okay, let's go to Isaiah now. Before we get to Isaiah 53, which is the suffering servant. Okay, let's go to 51, and let 52, and let's see what leads into 53. 
Uri, Uri, Livshi Uzech Tzion. We paraphrase this in our Friday night davening when we sing Lecha Dodi to greet the Shabbat Queen. Uri, Uri, awake, awake, Livshi Uzech Tzion, and clothe yourself in splendor, Zion. Livshi Bigdei Tefartech, Yerushalayim Yerakodesh, put on your robes of majesty, Jerusalem, holy city. Kilo Yosif Yavovach Oda Relvetame. For the uncircumcised and the clean shall never enter you again. Hitnari, arise. May Afar Kumi shake off the dust. Shivi Yerushalayim, sit on your throne, Jerusalem. Hitpatri Mosrei Tzavarech, Shvi Abat Take off the chains, the bonds from your neck. Captive one, the beautiful daughter of Zion. Kikoma Hashem. Because this is what Hashem says, Chinam you were sold for no price. You shall be redeemed without having to pay any money. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the time of the redemption of the nation of Israel. Is that clear what we're discussing over here? Okay, let's continue. So that's 52, 1, 2, 3. More of the same. Let's go to 13 to 15, which is what leads us right into the next chapter. Hine yaskil avdi. Oh, indeed, my servant shall prosper. What did my servant mean we saw before? Nation, Nation of Israel. Yarum v'nisav v'govamao, be exalted and raised to great heights. And we see we're talking about the nation of Israel here. And it's avdi, as we saw before. Kasher shamu alecha rabim, ke mishchat mi'ish mareyu torom adam. Just as the many were appalled at him, so marred was his appearance, unlike that of man formed beyond human semblance. When I read this pasuk, this verse, I'm always shaked, shooken by this, <laughs> by this shaking, <laughs> by this uh, Hasidic tales of the Holocaust by Professor Eliach. And she relates a story there about Branya. Branya was an amazing, amazing woman who ended up marrying, after, after the war, marrying the Blue Shiva Rebbe. But Branya was a, a, a woman who had survived. She was blonde and blue-eyed, so she was able to pass herself off as being Aryan. And she writes how she was traveling with her children on the train, the children were, were asleep, and all of these uh, Nazi officials were all there flirting with her. Right? She's a very attractive woman, and they were telling her how she is the paradigm example of an Aryan woman. And now they're talking to a Hasidic Jewish woman, <laughs> wow. and she was just praying the whole time that her little her little tzvika, her little her little son, wouldn't wake up and start to speak in Yiddish and, <laughs> and, and, and blow their cover. But when they were in when they were in Auschwitz, right. Um, she said her son came to him, uh, came to her, and was so uh, was so uh, uh, upset that, that he heard one of the Germans, one of the German guards walking along, <coughs> saying, uh, saying to his friend, "What terrible thing must uh, might I've done in my life that God punished me by making me have to deal with these people, with these skeletons of people?" Right? So you turn them into skeletons. Right? You take away any semblance of humanity. And then you wonder, why is it that God punished me that I have to be amongst them? That's what I think of. So marred was his appearance, unlike that of man formed beyond human semblance. Just so he shall startle many nations, kings shall be silenced because of him. They shall see what has not been told them, shall behold what they have never heard. What is that? What is that that they will hear? No idea what any of that means. Okay. Well, the nations will be startled, the kings will be silenced, right? Because they'll see that which they never realized. They will see that which has not been told them. They will behold what they have never heard. It's going to be a whole new understanding that they're going to have about who? The about the nation. Yeah. About the nation. This we're all talking about the nation of Israel. What are they going to say? What's their startle going to be? Like back at Sinai, because remember how... Let's go. Mihem min l'shmuatenu, uzroa Hashem. Oh, God, 
gosh, I was so careful to take care of all Hashem's names. <laughs> the one that got away. <laughs> Who can believe what we have heard? Upon whom has the arm of Hashem been revealed? Right, he has grown by his favor like a tree crown. Right, uh, he had no form, no beauty. We should look at him. No charm that we should find him pleasing. He was despised. He was shunned. He was sought man of suffering with disease. He hid his face from us. He was despised. We held him with no account. Yet it was our sickness, our depravity, that he was sparing. That's why I think about that, that guard there. Why has God made me suffer to have to deal with these people who are suffering your depravity? Our suffering he endured. We accounted and plagued him, smitten and afflicted by God. He was wounded because of our sins, crushed because of our wrongs. He bore that chastisement that made us whole, and his bruises, and by his bruises we were healed. We thought that we're good by destroying him. The next chapter, Rani Akaralo Yalada, shout, O barren one, who bore no child. Shout aloud for joy, you do not travail for the children of the wife forlorn shall outnumber those of the espoused of the Lord. Those who were rejected will now outnumber those who were uplifted. So what is all of this talking about? This is talking about messianic times. But who is it referring to? We see from chapter 52 and chapter 54 to understand chapter 53, who are we talking about? The nation of Israel that was despised, that was demoralized, that was suffering because of the depravity of others. Janet. So in particular, the ones, uh, they shall see what has not been told them and shall behold what has never been heard, what they have never heard. That's kind of like referring back to when visuals were audio at Sinai. Okay, interesting so, thought. So that it's kind of also really... It'll be that, cl- they'll have that clarity. And interesting also, thought. But it's definitely the people of the covenant who were at Sinai. Okay. Okay. Dove. One of the powers that she is supposed to have is take all the sins of Kuala Israel and put it on the nations. So let them know... I'm not sure what that means, though. To let them know what... I'm not sure what that means. Could be. I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Okay. So I, 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 I rather not go there. Yes. Okay. So with my minimal Hebrew, yeah. if I take all of the English, in Hebrew, so the it could be the same as the him, right? The conjugation, yeah. right? Yeah. So why, because what throws me is all of this translation is he. It's, it's third person. Why don't they just say it? If in fact it's return, referring to the nation of Israel. Well, remember a few verses before we started 53, Israel was referred to as my servant. So therefore referring to him, the servant. I'm very black and white. That's very convoluted. You just like say what you mean, you know, just... Well, we did. But, but look, this is written in prose. Right, you know, this is, you know, this is Lee prophecies. Not poetic at all. <laughs> this is prophecies about, you know, the messianic times. So we refer to Israel. We clearly saw as Avdi, as my servant. Okay. Right. So once Israel is referred to as my servant, then we refer to, then we will refer to him as he. Okay. Okay. The 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 last point, right, is a very important point. No, not yet, in a minute. All right? The last point is national revelation. Why do we accept the Torah and the laws of the Torah? Because God was revealed to us. Because God revealed himself to all of us. Right? God revealed himself to all of us. Right? At Mount Sinai. 
right? One of the, uh, what's unique about Judaism, it's not what this person or his disciples heard, it's not what this person had a vision, or this person saw these, um, these um, um, metal tablets. tablets with a message on it, right? You know, a- any religion, if a person is charismatic enough, then a person can convince, right? I'm not very good at this, but I've tried to convince people that God came to me last night in a dream and was starting a new religion called Sinarism. Okay? <laughs> but it, it, has, it has not taken off. Like, I, I, I just don't have the goods. I just can't do it, right? But um, anyone who is charismatic enough, you know, we had, we had the guy over here uh, in, in, in California, was it White? Right, who had, who had all the people put on their, their, their Nikes and, and get ready to hitch on to Haley's Comet, was going to take them, they all committed mass suicide. I mean, we, we, we have people who are charismatic, who can get people to believe the most um, outlandish of things. Now, I might be able to convince you of what I experienced. It's much harder to convince you of what you experienced. Okay? Judaism is the only religion that I know of that speaks of a national revelation that everyone, everyone experienced it. So it wasn't me telling you what God told me, right? It's what we all experienced. Maimonides states, Foundations of Torah, chapter 8, the Jews did not believe in Moses, our teacher, because of the miracles he performed. Whenever anyone's belief is based on seeing miracles, he has lingering doubts because it is possible miracles were performed through ma- magic or sorcery. All of the miracles performed by Moses in the desert were because they were necessary, not as proof of his prophecy. What then was the basis of Jewish belief? The revelation at Mount Sinai, which we saw with our own eyes and heard with our own ears, not depend on the testimony of others. As it says, face to face God spoke with you. The Torah also states, God did not make his come with the fathers, but with us who are all here alive today. If there's going to be, if God spoke, if our belief, our religion is based on God having spoken to us, right? If someone's going to say, someone's going to come to me and say, well, guess what? God spoke to me, and it's changed. Right? You know, as parents, right? Right? I, your parents tell kids, I don't want you to climb on that roof. All right? Why do you climb on the roof? My friend told me to. It doesn't work. All right? My friend told me that you said it's okay. All right? So what's the parent's response? I told you it's not okay. Unless you heard from me that it is okay, you stay off that roof. All right? And kill yourself over there. Right? So we have a situation where... God spoke to us. If there's going to be a change, it's got to come to us. It's not going to be one person coming forward and saying, oh, and by the way, um, you don't have to do all the things that God said that you need to do. Okay, the Rambam continues in Hilchot Malachim 11.4. And 